This is Lynn Gordon with SDSU Extension. I'm Extension Beef Cow Calf Field Specialist and I am attending the National Cattlemen's Beef Association meetings in Tampa, Florida. Today was the Cattlemen's College sessions. It's a day long of educational sessions and with me is one of the speakers um, that uh, spoke at the sessions to the producers today. Um, I have with me Jack Holden from Montana, from Western Montana and Jack spoke in one of the more interesting sessions because he addressed how technology is impacting the beef industry and has impacted the beef industry. So Jack, tell us a little bit about what were some of the technologies in your ranch that you shared with the producers in the session today? Well, I think one of the main key points that I talked about in our ranch is the use of DNA technology and how much it's progressed. I mean, we've always uh, parentage verified our cattle, clear black to the blood typing days. Now we've got DNA, you know, we went through the microsatellite phase, now SNPs. Uh, the genetic defect testing, you know, our, every animal that we sell is parentage verified, ge tested to be free from any genetic, known genetic defects. Um, and then now the, the 50K panels that the Hereford Association has developed with Dorian Garrick through Iowa State, and, and that's being done through GeneSeq. Uh, we're doing quite a bit of 50K work. Uh, we've, all of our herd sires have been done. Uh, the top third of our sale bulls, uh, we've, we've done 50K panels on, all of our donor females. Uh, we have a lot of embryo transfer in our herd, and so this helps us especially to maybe identify the, the ET full sibs that, that, that are going to outbreed the other ones, you know, and find out a little quicker, and especially in our program with the line breeding you know, we don't have as much of an opportunity to use older proven bulls because we have to turn our generations with our line breeding program. So hopefully help us identify younger sires quicker that are going to do the things we want to do for us. So that was one of the main key points. Uh, the other point I probably brought up as much was the, you know, cattle management software. We, we use Jim, which is we really like because it's server-based. Um, you can use it shoot side out in the field, you know, anywhere you can log in and, and all the data in there and the ability to, you know, with all the data and all the measurements that all of us take anymore, the ultrasound and the weights and the EPDs and to be able to sort that and, and to be able to do mating selections and just, you know, gestation lengths, measure fertility, uh, you know, it's got a lot of ability to do uh, custom reports and, and sort things any way you want through spreadsheets or however. And, and so that's really helped us the last few years since we've been on it too. Um, just a really good panel, a lot of good breeders talking about the things that, you know, really trying to do to make cattle better for the beef, beef industry. Well, and there's a lot of new technologies out there and a lot to study and analyze. Did um, Were you hesitant at all to consider which technologies to go into, or did you feel like it was definitely needed for the future of your Hereford operation? You know, we've always, I mean, I, I like to know that the data that I am going to be doing or tests are going to be valid and that's part of the reason you know we didn't do 50k tests you know through the other companies because I wasn't sure that they were valid for Hereford cattle and they were you know and then that data is actually proven out that you know Hereford cattle were their own set definitely those markers didn't translate for growth and you know cavities and those things and you know now that I've definitely you know grasped on to all that now, you know, once we feel comfortable and, you know, we definitely want to know everything we can about the cattle in our herd to, to make them better and, you know, both phenotypes, genotypes, everything we can do to make the, you know, the ideal, uh, you know, animals that are going to go work for our customers, so. Yeah, because the end goal is to produce a, a product for your customers, either in your seed stock operation or for the consumers. Do you see any other new technologies coming down the pike that you're looking at? Well, I think, you know, that's things are changing so rapidly in the beef industry right now and just all of the all the data that's being collected and everything. I mean, it's going to be I think the next 5 to probably next 5 years we'll be amazed with how many more tests and and answers we can get, you know, and I mean, they'll be, you know, like having to do all the RFI work for feed intake. I think eventually we'll be able, you know, that's probably very soon, you know, that's going to be more and more accurate to be able to just DNA test them, not have to go through all of the expense and all the trials to doing that. And I, it's just, I think the, you know, the technology future is, is unlimited for the, for the beef industry. I just, you know, like, I think we need to grasp that. And yet I think we always need to, 
keep an eye on, you know, we can't let data strictly drive us. I think you still have to have the, the phenotype and the structural soundness and all of those things in cattle. And I, you know, I hope that, you know, as an industry, you know, in breeders that we, 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 we do a good job of blending all that together to make cattle that are, you know, more profitable for everybody. Great. And you mentioned about how you remember the days of the co data collection of your grandpa and, and how it was all done by hand. And we're fortunate we have the computers and the way that we can do technology nowadays. So thank you very much. Thank you for being one of the speakers at Cattlemen's College and for interviewing with us today. Thank you, Jack. Thank you.